It's a 1939 Ford Special Roadster, and it was built especially for William Clay Ford, the grandson of Henry Ford, and he got it as a gift for his 15th birthday. Isn't that, wow, look at the history. It says he went on to eventually own the Detroit Lions franchise. Here we have an authentic vampire killing kit. Every house should have one. Here you can see we have an asteroid, meteorite. That is a dinosaur egg. Don't hatch while I'm here. Wow, look at this. This piano is amazing. So it says that this piano is extremely extremely rare and it's worth a million and a half dollars and one of the reasons why is because it has the signature of all of the pianists that are known for playing this all over and it says there are thousands of signatures all over this there you can see elton john right there and this is the gold white house piano pretty amazing made by Steinway and Sons and this is the inside of that White House grand piano so this piano has quite a story it says that this is the Steinway B piano and it says it was sold to Woodland Sound Studios and used in studio famous piano players of the world including little Richard Jerry Lee Lewis and two of Elvis Presley's pianists Floyd Kramer and David Briggs it was used on the biggest selling records of the day, including albums by Ray Orbison, The Oak Ridge Boys, Robert Altman's film Nashville, it becomes central to the scene as Henry Gibson's character berates Frog for playing the piano like a frog. A recording engineer on a particularly raucous Jerry Lee Lewis sessions remember, remembers wiping the killer's blood off the keys after he had finished playing. It says Woodland Studios was known as the place to record in Nashville during the 70s. Wow. Pretty cool. Is there any blood still in those keys? That's an interesting way to display your gun collection, I guess. Hang them from chains. There's Garth Brooks on that guitar. Take a look at this wooden car. Isn't that something? Never seen those before. 1931 Model A Woody is what it's called. And one of the moments we've been waiting for, the Abraham Lincoln hearse. Wow. That would have carried his body after assassination. says this is believed to be a Cunningham Coach Factory hearse. Research suggests that the design with its curved top, large non-square side windows, rooftop wooden vases is the typical design used by Rochester New York Company. The earliest funeral coaches were modeled after the French Corbillard and featured large overall plate glass windows. Wow. Can you imagine seeing President Lincoln Going through town, his hearse in there. If you look inside, you can see the flag in there. They have a little placard over here that says, President Lincoln's horse, Old Bob, was adorned with a mourning blanket and directly followed the hearse 
at the final funeral procession in Springfield. At the end of the funeral procession, President Lincoln's son and cousin, Robert Lincoln, John Hanks, respectively, rode their horses. President Lincoln's wife remained at the White House during the funeral procession as she continued to mourn. The funeral train visited 14 cities. In addition to carrying President Lincoln's body, the train also carried Willie Lincoln's body, the son of the president. Right here, you can even see the path that it took to Springfield. Washington DC is over here and it went up here, and all the way around, down here, up to Chicago, and then back down. Kind of surprised this didn't end up at the Museum of Funeral History. So that's where the man would have sat to steer it and drive it through town. Since there's so much more to see, I'm going to walk past and let you guys look at a lot of this. Because they have them a little too, you know, tight together in here to really be able to feature them. So I'll just give you a nice walking look. And I'm going to check out all the little placards along the way. And if it says anything specific that it's known for, I'll let you know. Sometimes it'll say if it was used for something or owned by someone. That's cool. It's interesting that green trim. Oh boy, can you imagine riding that around? You have to steer with that little lever. Look at how she's doing it. Simpler time. It's kind of like Willy Wonka's. <laughs> DeWitt Motor Company. Nineteen sixteen Model T. Bonnie and Clyde gang used these type of cars. This nineteen thirty two Ford V eight, it says. In March nineteen thirty three. We've actually seen the real car they had the shootout with. It's got a rumble seat in the back, too. That's an old Highway Patrol car, Florida Highway Patrol. DeSoto. It's almost a hearse design. Futuramic 88. Some Thunderbirds. There are so many cars in here to see. <laughs> You'll have to definitely come here and check it out for yourself. You want to see every single one. I'm not going to show every single one. This vlog would be two hours long if I did. Let's just say this is definitely, this place is definitely worth your money to come visit. They have a little bit of something from every era, as you can see here. Every style. They have historical cars, they have movie cars, Evil Knievel bikes. Look at all that. A DeLorean. One of the few that isn't turned into a uh, Back to the Future time machine yet. 
It says the car you see here was assembled in Columbus, Ohio after the DeLorean Motor Car Corporation in Ireland went bankrupt. It says a total of 9,096 vehicles of this body style were built between 1981 and 83. And it says of these, three cars were actually finished in 24 karat gold as a DeLorean American Express promotion. Wow. Oh, that looks familiar. That looks familiar. Where's Burt Reynolds? 1979 Special Edition Pontiac Trans Am. 10 actual miles on this car. Of course, it was popular because of Smokey and the Bandit. Take a look at that. Duesenberg, right next to this beautiful Stingray. This one's a Hot Wheel car. Man, they got some great stuff and there's more outside we haven't seen. Chevy Nova. I don't really care for that color. I know it's supposed to be gold, but not a big fan. That looks awesome, though. Oh, Roadrunner. I had a friend that had a Roadrunner when we were in high school. Did not look like that, but man, that's beautiful. Thing was loud, too. Loud and fast. AMC Javelin. Nice. GTO convertible and a judge. I've seen those before. the original color that has really held up well 66 Chevy Corvette stingray Take a look at a couple more of these over here and then we'll head outside. Man, this place is great. Man, look at these two. Beautiful. Cadillac convertible. 1950 Packard. That's a 79 Rolls Royce Cornish Coupe. I'm not a fan of that color. But I don't think I'll ever have to worry about buying a Rolls Royce anyway, so. And that big thing right there is an 1850s commercial ice box. And then we have a creamery truck over here, 1957 creamery truck. This is a 1932 school bus. Looks 
looks like it's built out of like a tractor almost. What an absolutely cool museum. But I think we've seen pretty much as much as we're going to see today. Hope you guys enjoyed this. What a piece of history. All right, my friends, we are going to call it a day. I hope you all enjoyed seeing the Tallahassee Antique Car Museum and seeing the hearse that took Abraham Lincoln to his final resting place. Hope you all enjoyed this. We'll see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye. Awesome.